And this is Prop Dusty here on the Pixhop builds. Uh, this is another build. This is the uh, eighth build of the same type. Um, this one is a uh, long range uh, S500 build. Um, taking off from the S500. Um, a lot of stuff that I've been doing, um, but I want to make it simplified, real easy for hopefully people to understand how to get up and running very quickly uh, without the mumbo jumbo. I'll link it down below at least two or three other places you can go on YouTube for very good uh, information on how to do things quickly and get them done when you think things aren't going the right way. So here I have the basic normal setup. Um, what you want to do is before pre-hand, before you install anything onto your uh, actual frame, you want to set things up correctly, get them to where you need them because you're going to be doing a lot of flipping, twirling, twisting, soldering, unsoldering, stuff like that. You're going to make some tools um, uh, specifically for your receiver, um, for your module, for your radio, so, uh, things that you have to do. You want to upgrade your firmware, get that all situated, get that out of the way. Okay, so basically what we have right here is what we're going to be playing with our initial setup of the Pixhawk. So we have the Pixhawk module, we have the GPS, okay, GPS has the um, plugged into the uh, GPS port and then the secondary sensor is plugged into the I2C, okay. Then what we have is we have the buzzer, we plug the buzzer into the buzzer, obviously, and we have the switch, we plug the switch, plug your switch into the switch. Now you can get these, you can you can do a lot of things, you can cut this cable, you can elongate this cable, you can make it longer, you can make it shorter, whatever you need to do, you can put it on a post, that's probably what I'm going to do, to make it very easily so uh, accessible, so when the quadcopter's running I can just use it to turn, on, turn things on and off. Um, and then you have your receiver I'm using specifically the slim the R with the R9 R9 slim pop plus with the module and a cable that we're going to be making uh, specifically to connect to the S port not the S bus but the S port on this receiver so that you can upgrade the firmware okay what this utilizes is on con 1 this is con 1 the plug-in that you get with the receiver with the with the uh, the slim receiver you get this cable okay and what you're gonna use is obviously the positive the negative and the S port wire okay and you're also going to use, after the S-Port, after you update the firmware, you're going to be using the gray wire, okay, which is the fourth wire down, which is your S-Bus out, okay? So remember that your S-Bus out is then connected to your signal, which is then connected into the RCN, okay? Not the S-Bus, but the RCN. <coughs> So, get that straight there. The thing about upgrading this is that a lot of people are doing it from the module on the back of the Tyrannus uh, QX7. And you think that you have to take this module out and then use the module ports here. You do not have to do that. Once you go through, you upgrade this radio, which you have to do via the Fry uh, Sky website. The first thing you do with this module is you upgrade the radio. <clears throat> the secondary thing is I also do have a battery pack, the LiPo upgrade on this that I can show you if anybody's interested in how to get that. That's you can get this from Banggood for like seven bucks. Okay, you can make another uh, cable out, which will allow you to charge this at any time. Right, that's another mod. That's another mod down the road. Uh, of course, the light indicator on the back. You probably should know about that. When this is on, uh, this is it, 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 it's uh, seeking a bind. It's flashing. When it's stable, it's red. When it's connected, it's green. So I'll give you an idea of that. First thing you got to do with uh, upgrading your receiver and the module is to download both of those files. Okay, those files are found on the 
Fry Sky website, okay, and what you're looking for at this point in time is for the module and the receiver, you're, you're going to want to download and upload into your radio 180329, okay, this is the non-EU version, this is the US version if you're running the US module. Okay, you want to download that for the module, and you want to download the same number for the firmware for the Slim. Okay, so that number is 180329. So you download them both, the same uh, uh, firmware version. Upload it into the radio via your USB port, found on the bottom here. Okay, and in order to do that, you should know by now that all you have to do is click and hold both of these trims as such and then just tap that button. Don't hold it in, just tap it. And then you're going to go into uh, being able to select your firmware, right firmware, and, and set up your USB, uh, connect to your computer, and download, up to upload stuff to your card inside here. You can take the card out, put it in your computer, but if I do that, we can just put a USB cable in there. Okay, so that's that's one way of doing things. The secondary thing is, is once you're done with that, you have that established, you have the files in the radio. Welcome to OpenTX. You're going to go into the radio settings. Long hold on that, the middle button, radio setup. So you're going to go page over, and here we're now into the SD card. Go to whatever folder you made, your firmware, and you can see how mine's listed right there. And this here is your firmware, okay? And what you do is you long hold on the firmware when you have your receiver hooked up here, or when you have your module plugged in. When the module is plugged in, you want to hold that, okay? And you want to do flash external module you want to hold that long hold it and then you'll see a you'll see a, a loading bar it takes a while so wait for it and then the, this screen will just disappear it'll just boop, disappear so then you go back here and you go to your slim you do the same thing you go here to here you long hold okay and then you you want to do flash s port okay the thing is, is on the on the receiver itself, you want to make sure that you solder on the wire, or you create another connector. Okay, you create a connector out of the spare one that they give you. Okay, with the three P, with the three um, the Futaba connector. Okay, which then in turn plugs into the bottom of the radio. Okay, noticing that I mark, I kind of marked mine. You can't really tell. Yeah, you can. Negative positive and then and signal so this is the left side is negative the middle is positive the outside right terminal is signal so how you would have it set up is is black red and white okay and then on that on this you would you would solder black red to black and red and then you would solder your um, S port which is green a green wire to the white wire on this so that S port will be connected to the white wire and then you would then plug this into the radio and then you would do flash um, S port okay and then you'll see the bar it'll load and then everything will be honky dory hopefully then this thing will just disappear Beep. it'll go back to whatever and then you're done you're done flashing the module and you're done flashing the receiver okay so now with power any type of power to the receiver or the radio once you set up the receiver you can bind the radio to the receiver very easily and how you do that you're gonna go into your uh, model you're gonna scroll down Okay, to your underneath global 
functions. You're going to look at in, it'll, so it'll say internal RF mode and it'll be on. So you want to turn that off and then you want to turn on your external RF. Since you updated the radio now or if you have a new radio, you should see R9M FCC, which is the US version. I don't, you can't really see that, but this thing's stupid. Okay. So, once you have that set up, you can set it up. Just leave it at channel uh, 116. You can leave it on 04. Um, you turn your S port on. You could start out at 10 make, uh, milliwatts. You want to set up your failsafe for no pulses um, to the receiver. And then you want to click and hold your bond, your, your to bind, to bind button. Use this channel one through eight to telemetry on, doesn't matter. And then once you hear the beeping, you want to go and you want to unplug, make sure everything's powered off. This is this is plugged into your Pixhawk. Power up your Pixhawk while holding holding this the uh, bind button on the receiver in, and then your radio is also beeping. And when you do that. You let go of this button here, and what it'll do is a couple seconds later, it should show you a green blinking light. If it's red and green, it's still in bind mode. That means it didn't work. Firmware, something's messed up. So you got to go back, make sure that you did the firmware correctly and all that, because this should be solid green. So what I have right now, after setting all this up, very simply. With the receiver, I know I'm doing a little bit backwards, but and you're all set to go with the receiver, so that's pretty much all set. Wait for the sound to come up and everything. You're pretty much ready to go. All right, so now this the other thing about going back into the pitch hawk. Receiver still connected. Telemetry lost. There are some things that. Um, you just want to follow on that one video to make it very simple um, to get all this set up. So um, the other you know, one program you're going to be downloading is you're going to be downloading uh, Mission Planner. So if you look that up, you search the internet for Mission Planner. I'll put a link uh, down below. Your first initial setup is basically to set all this up as is on a piece of cardboard mounted with double stick tape. Because you want these to be in aligned with each other, they're both pointing in the same direction. That's so that whatever you do, you basically this is the model, okay? So you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be setting up your calibration. You're gonna be setting up your compass. And you're going to be uh, calibrating the GPS. So these are things that you want to do. You may make sure everything's all nice and like snug on a nice piece of either wood, well, thin piece of wood or cardboard. The first thing you're going to do is um, just run through that one video that I sent you. Basically tells you, he tells you, he's really good at it, um, how to set up this basic setup. And then from there, we'll go from there on setting up the um, extra, all the extra components and everything onto the S500, and then we're going to get into actually doing some really uh, interesting uh, programming and coding, and possibly some even engineering for some of the things that we have that we want to do in the future um, with our um, ham uh, frequency repeater system. Um, also, radio option A, option A, which is basically a repeating frog leapfrog scenario which allows us to be able to utilize up to 10, 15, 20 quadcopters in a series to go 100, 200 miles away um, and, and be able to maintain those quadcopters along the way. I'm also going to show uh, how to hook up a uh, battery bank, which basically becomes its own self-sufficient uh, uh, charging station. So that is also programmed with Adreno so that you know, it knows when it's utilizing power, when it's not utilizing power. It can land. Um, it, can, it, it will know it's a sunny day. It'll know it's a, it's a gloomy day. It'll try to maintain battery focus. 
Um, these are things that I wanted to do to be smart about. Um, but it will also utilize waypoints in a, such a way where um, it won't land in, in such a place where there's, there's heavy tree cover, things like that. It will land only in places where it can get sufficient sunlight throughout the day. Um, it will have a cooling uh, situation, so we're going to have an uh, onboard uh, fan cooling situation for the VTX and for other flight equipment that's going to be getting, you know, will be getting hot. We're also going to make a printed uh, uh, cowl for it, uh, unit, lightweight, and we're also going to do a, a bunch of things with the camera set up too as well. So it's going to have multiple cameras on it. It's going to have uh, also FTV, FPV camera uh, cameras on it that are going to be actually movable. So they're going to be in motion so that we can look around and see, you know, flying in a direct line of sight, uh, flying out of direct line of sight, but also being able to utilize the pivot motion so that we can look around and still maintaining flight in a direction or to a waypoint. So a lot of fun stuff. So I hope you I hope you, you understand at least a little bit of what I was talking about with the radio. Hopefully that doesn't, you know, uh, make your brain go fried. You don't spend two hours uh, doing it, but it's... It's, it's very simplified and um, definitely creating a cable for your future receivers if you're using the R9 uh, modules for the long range you are going to have to update the firmware you are going to have to update the module so there's no getting out of that and uh, sorry for people that uh, you know are not power users or or know anything about this but here's your here's how you're gonna hit the ground running learning how to do stuff so definitely create that uh, if you're gonna get a lot of these especially the mini too as well I'll show something about that it's the same exact thing though on theirs you don't really have to re worry about specifics in the firmware just get the newest firmware for the R9 mini um, receiver and just up update it from the radio then you're always going to update it from the the S port of the radio itself. So there's no need to, to utilize the module uh, ports on the back of the uh, radio. Um, this enough said. Hopefully I have enough information. We'll go on to uh, uh, another part in a, in a few, and uh, I'll get something to drink here, something to eat, and then uh, we'll get right on to uh, setting up the uh, quadcopter and spinning up the props. So with that said, we'll uh, talk to you in a